Hello everyone, this is Blacksmith Orange, and I am in detention. Yeah, no joke, I am in detention for killing Mechanic Hat. I didn't even do anything. Okay, I killed him, but he threatened us. Speaking of which, guess which Honey Our episode we're, we're reviewing today? Our episode opens up seemingly at a prison. Such a way to start an episode. Oh no wait, it's detention. Okay. Don't see why the whole school had to go on lockdown. But okay. Anyway, this is our main cast. Kate, a popular girl, who is, you guessed it, mean to the less popular people. Halftime. A laid-back jock. Yeah, I don't know why he's called halftime either. And finally, Audrey. A girl who doesn't follow the crowd. She just follows her own rules. That's kind of what makes her likable. Anyway, this is Mr. Kane. He's in charge of detention and totally has nothing to do with the twist. Oh, and he's uh, not your friend or your enemy. There'll be no sleeping, no texting, no listening to whatever it is you listen to. But, uh, I guess eating chips are allowed? I like that tie. Classic, but modern. Aw, she's kissing the teacher's ass. This girl is so sweet. You know, if she turns out to be a complete bitch later on, I'm gonna be completely surprised. Anyway, in true professional manner, Mr. Kane leaves the classroom. Yes, he leaves these kids who are in trouble alone in a classroom. And once he leaves, Audrey sees whoever that is. Now, I do have a theory that I want to show later on about what the devil it could be. <laughs> You get it because, like, he said what, what the devil could be. It was, it was actually a devil. You, you get it? I know where the door is. Now, after our intro, we learn that there's some tension between our three stooges. Well, one of them's a stooge. But, luckily, later on, we learn some character. De we get some character development. It's not much, but it, it, it at least explains stuff. Now, for a first-time viewer, the bitterness and hostility these characters have toward one another can be a little annoying. However, if you bear with me, it'll get better. Anyway, this random guy comes in with an umbrella, and Kate is pretty calm about... Watch it! Sorry, sorry! Are you sure you're in the right place? I mean, didn't they make a rule against being a hopeless dork? Alright, uh... I know we're supposed to... You want us to kinda hate our character, but based on how this ends, don't you think you're going a, bit, a little bit overboard? You know what happens to girls like you after high school? Nothing. This is it. So soak it up, because in a few years, nobody's gonna even care about you. Words of wisdom. My texts aren't coming through. I haven't gotten one in 20 minutes. What are you talking about? My phone has great cell service during a thunderstorm. Anyway, after some more bickering, it turns out Kate invited Halftime to a par to a party of hers. Uh, what relevance does it have? I don't know either. Why is Kate so obsessed with her party anyway? She's in detention, which means it can which means it's canceled. Anyway, after getting to know the mysterious boy. Audrey learns that he actually has been around for a while. Now this has no importance and will not come up in the plot later on whatsoever. Yep, this has no meaning. Nothing to see here. I mean, I've never seen you around school before. And no offense, but how could I miss you? Yeah, he wears a bright yellow raincoat. So how exactly could you miss him, I wonder? Also, you see the two posters behind Audrey? 
Well, they have some symbolism behind them. This poster is most likely addressing Kate due to her cruel attitude. And this poster is possibly addressing the scene that just happened. You know, with Kate and the raincoat guy. Anyway, so far, we're about five minutes into the episode, and nothing scary has happened other than the creepy devil face showing up at the window. Ooh. Now, if something doesn't happen soon, we're going to have to stop calling this haunting hour. In fact, there's no haunting hour. We're just going to have to call it hour. But wait, this was from the same writers as Mascot in the cast. So maybe something awesome will happen later on down the line. <laughs> Can't wait for that scary revelation. Anyway, we cut back to Kate bragging in about how her life is better than ours. Because we were clearly missing that, weren't we? Anyway, Halftime's brain kicks into gear and he finally decides to ditch Kate after realizing that she is nothing but a bitch. Anyway, after being ditched for being a bad person, oh no, anything but that, Mr. Kane confronts her and I have to say that this scene is actually pretty t intense. Mr. Kane does look pretty intimidating here, and hell, even Kate looks scared. Anyway, after an acid trip, Kate... Uh, just watch. She... She gets pulled into a closet by ninjas. And apparently it was also scary enough to warrant a commercial break. Please don't let this be another case of Mrs. Worthington. I used to love this episode, and I want to keep loving it. Please. Please redeem yourself. While Kate is too busy being missing, Halftime runs across the janitor, and he tells and he tells him the story of how he got invited to Kate's party. So apparently, he thwarted the votes. And... Kate pretty much bribed them to... In the end, we're supposed to like Kate, right? So, how is this Kate helping us make find her likable? Yeah, it kind of hurt. takes away character points. Anyway, Halftime mysteriously ends up back with Audrey, who has been waiting patiently for the plot to progress. Anyway, Halftime and Audrey have a heart-to-heart. And I have to say, this episode seems to be more about the characters than the actual scares. And it does an okay job at it. Not as good as Flight or Toy Train, but... Yeah, it's, it's a good attempt. Especially a first-time attempt at something like this for Craig S. Phillips and Harold Hayes Jr., who have previously been known for writing more disturbing episodes, such as Mascot and the Cast. Anyway, more disturbing shit happens, and... Audrey is having none of it, so she decides to leave. But, nope. The spooky scenery is not letting her. I think it's fair to point out that... That was pretty creepy. I mean... What was in the... What was even in the bottom of that all that void? Was it... Hell? Was it a place where nothing exists? Does it, Is it just... Infinite and... You, you just never stop falling? Either way, it's even more scarier due to the fact that Audrey and Audrey and Halftime almost came close to falling in it. This episode this episode seems to be getting good. Anyway, Halftime has a flashback to when he was on the float with Kate, which he was able to do after thwarting the the election results. Wait a minute, I thought that was for to get to a party. Yeah, I'm being too hard on this episode. It's it's doing passable so far. Then we get a twist. Well, it's not really a twist because it's not that surprising, so I guess we'll just call it a scene. The Rainco Kid is revealed to have been both the janitor and Mr. Kane the whole time, and he is uh, a deity that has been sent to this realm to decide the fate of these kids. But what is going on exactly? Well, first of all, this twist has been done before, so, yeah, it's not really that shocking, but I'm willing to let it pass. Now, here's a great twist. It's revealed that Audrey caused the accident. Why? Because she was getting, trying to get back at Kate for being so mean and 
popular. And I like the symbol with the devil mask too. It's revealing that she was just as bad on the inside, if not worse, for trying to cause harm to an event that probably meant a lot to a lot of people. This is this episode is actually very deep. I like it. Anyway, in true Mrs. Worthington fashion, Halftime decides that they aren't leaving without Kate. Anyway, the doors mysteri mysteriously open and mysteriously show the outside of the school, and the gang and the gang sees Kate outside, crying, and surprisingly, actually makes me feel bad for her. Yeah, not because she's getting punished, but because, but because she's finally realizing what a horrible person she's been, and that that kind of, for some reason, makes me just feel for her and it also adds character points to her because she's finally realizing her mistakes and not only that she's willing to risk going to hell just because she's she feels like she deserves it and that makes it just even more tear jerking especially since Audrey and Kate used to be friends oh hell yeah Karate Kid is on after this well part two, but still Karate Kid. Anyway, Audrey and Kate have the heart to heart and wait for it. Everything re re time rewinds and they're giving me another chance. Now you may say that this may feel random and just given to them, but after learning their mistakes and after all the hell, no pun intended, that they went through, I feel like that it's earned. And anyways, that was this that was the end to the tension. And it was not bad at all. Um sure there the twists, you know, have been done on other Haunting Hour episodes, but it's the character development that happens later on that makes it a very decent episode. As well as some very solid tear jerking scenes. It's not the scariest episode, and it's not as intense as episodes such as, like I said, Flight or Toy Train, but it's a interesting turn for Craig S. Phillips and Harold Hayes Jr., and it's just not bad at all. I'd give it a watch. And I give this episode a B+. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.